Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Noble, along with Wofford head football coach Josh Conklin, and welcome to another season of the Josh Conklin Show. A little bit different this year. We're combining what used to be inside Wofford football with the coaches show so every week we'll give you a comprehensive look back at the game that we just played a look ahead to the game upcoming and some behind the scenes features with the terrier football program so without further ado welcome josh conklin there's never a bad time to be one and oh you've heard me say that a couple of times before congratulations on a great win up at elon and it must have been a fun bus ride home on saturday yeah no we really enjoyed it uh it was a uh a great game, obviously really hard fought. And, and like you said, I mean, anytime you're 1-0 and, and you get that first win of the season, uh, it's always a good thing. And you can learn a lot from it, which uh, which we will. And, of course, we're into a bye week a lot earlier than we usually are. We have an off weekend coming up this weekend. And then the home opener September 18th against Kennesaw State. When we come back, we'll jump right into the first half highlights later on in the show. We'll get some post-game reaction from the Terrier players, look ahead to what's coming up for the Terriers this bye week, and also go around the Southern Conference and the FCS, some very interesting results in week one. So keep it right here. Your first half highlights coming up next. Black and gold. Bold. A victory story about to be told. Grit, toughness, and tenacity. A hub of hard work in Hub City. We're on these wins like dogs on a bone. In the zone, our place in your face won't leave you alone. Strength, speed, fire, true. I'm sorry, do these things trouble you? We're Wofford College. We fly the W. Ingalls, proud partner of the Wofford Terriers. Anybody that takes the field today, which is going to be most of you guys in some way, shape, or form, you guys should take the field with a heck of a lot of confidence. You guys understand that? All the stuff that you guys have done, I want you to think about that because now you have the opportunity to do what? You have the opportunity to go play the game that you love to play. There's a distinct difference today, guys. The difference is this, we want you to go to compete, but we want you to compete to win the game. There's a big difference, a big difference. Okay, my my son's third grade flag football team, they're going to go out and compete. We need you guys to go out and compete to win. Do you guys understand that? That is a challenge. That's a man-to-man challenge. That's I've got to be my man or he's trying to be me. Compete to win. Don't just compete. Okay, keep that in the back of your mind today. Play for every guy in this room, okay? Leave no doubt in everybody's mind that this has got to be a different 2021 team. We burned the boats, guys. We are moving forward. Let's hop on. Let's get after it. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Here we go. Family on two. One, two, three. Let's go. As you can tell, Coach Conklin had the Terriers ready to roll Saturday at Elon. You always want to give a few clear messages to the team, some bullet points to, to think of. How did you feel they came out of the locker room in terms of readiness to play? Well, I thought, you know, as a football team, you saw some nerves um, with everybody, not only the young guys, but also the old guys. But you know, I think the thing that we stressed all all fall camp and, and even after the spring season last last year was, you know, we just want to try to get better fundamentally, try, try to get better schematically, and, and really just focus on that and really take it one play at a time. And that was the message throughout the entire game. I think at times, you know, we, we begin to get result-oriented. Uh, we worry about the score, and it's just taking one play at a time. Um, and that was the message, getting better uh, one day at a time during fall camp. And I really thought they came out and did that um, for the most part. Peyton Derrick, of course, getting the start at quarterback, his first collegiate start. Let's go to the first half highlights from Elon. Here comes Yerk, and we are underway in the 2021 fall season 
for the Terriers. Backs behind Derek, who's in the shotgun. First and 10 from the 25. Derek fakes the handoff. Broussard breaks a tackle. He's got plenty of yardage. Long gainer almost out to midfield. And Broussard actually gets it all the way out to the 49-yard line. Kyler Davis, who's made his last 11 field goals, snap, kick, it's up, it's got the distance, and it is good. And Elon strikes first with 1.38 to go in this first quarter. Your score from Elon, it's the Phoenix 3 and the Terriers nothing. Terriers out first and 10 on the 35. And he'll inside handoff and room to run. That's Mulligan down the left sideline. One man to beat. 20, 10. Touchdown Terriers. Irvin Mulligan 65 yards and Wofford forges in front. Cheek who was thrown about I'd say 85% of the time keeps it this time and he's got a huge lane across midfield 50-40. Knocked down at the 30-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Donovan Anderson. But Davis Cheek fooled everybody on that one. It's those big wide receivers at the bottom on the right, the wide side of the field. And that's exactly where Cheek is looking. Underneath pattern is complete. Caught inside the five. Touchdown, Elon. Cortez Weeks made the catch. Cut back inside, inside the Wofford defender. And stretched it into the end zone for the first Phoenix touchdown of the day. Defense off of his line for Wofford. Cecil Fisher is in there at left tackle as Derek goes short across the middle in a catch in traffic and landed. Parker breaks free across the 40, the 30. Parker still running. Who will he be run down from behind? Yes. Did he reach out and get the pylon? No. He's going to be out of bounds inside the five from the one. Derek is under center this time. Fullback behind him, the tailback is Ingram, breaks a tackle, breaks another and dives into the end zone for the Terrier touchdown. Ryan Ingram from a yard out and Wofford's back out in front. Lost his shoe and it didn't matter. Seeing some action, Cheek rolls out to his left, quick delivery, it's incomplete, intercepted. intercepted. Off the hands of the receiver, right, two. I think that's Amir Anur, the freshman. I think you're absolutely right. Amir Anur, the freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. And a half, Wofford leading by four and looking for more. Derek to Walker, spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Terriers. Nathan Walker's first score of the year that's, from two yards out. That's great right there, making them pay for that uh, costly turnover. And the Terriers now have opened up their largest lead of the afternoon. For Davis Cheek, who's back there alone again. He's got to pull it under. Michael Mason gets in there with the sack. The first sack of the year for big number 99. Couldn't have come at a better time with 22 seconds left in the half. Back to the left, and he's dropping back, looking right, and he will throw it. Sideline, complete. Inbounds, breaking one tackle, breaking two, and down the sideline, finally a shoestring tackle. Donovan Anderson tripped up Jackson Parham. He was almost the last man, but a big gainer. Seconds to go. Snap, hold, kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. So the Phoenix end the half on a high note, courtesy of a 42-yard field goal by Skyler Davis, but it's the Wofford Terriers with the lead at halftime. It's Wofford 21, Elon 13. So it was 3-0 Elon after the first quarter, and in the second quarter, you guys explode for 21 points. Irvin Mulligan showing some jets on that 65-yard touchdown run, but then on the next two touchdowns, Coach, a combination of a long, sustained drive and your defense turning the ball over and you guys taking advantage of a short field. I know they kick a field goal at the very end of, uh, of the half, but but 21 points in the first half, you had to feel pretty good going into the locker room at halftime. We really did, Jim. I think the one thing we spoke a lot about um, you know, during fall camp, again, I go back to that, is we talked about explosive plays. Offensively, we had nine explosive plays, and, and we consider that a 15-yard run um, or a 20-yard pass. Those explosive plays led to uh, some points for us. The other thing that we talked about with our football team, on offense especially, is trying to score one touchdown a quarter. Uh, if you do that for four quarters, it's 28 points. We feel like we got a chance to win most of those games. So. We didn't do great the first quarter, but we, we did come out the second quarter um, and, and create some explosive plays, put some points on the board, and our defense started to settle in and got comfortable with, I think, what they were seeing offensively. Yeah, Elon's quarterback, Davis Cheek, was in rhythm early. 
and I think some of the coverages were a little bit soft and, and, and tackling after the catch was a bit of a problem. I thought immediately when the second quarter began, that tightened up. I thought there were good adjustments made by the defensive coaching staff. I thought you got some penetration there and got in the quarterback's face a little bit. I mean, that's the evolution of a long, of a young defense. Young on the defensive line, fairly young in the secondary. It, it may take a, a series or two for them to, to get their feet, so to speak. Yeah, you take that and then you, you combine that with not understanding exactly what you're going to see. You know, what type of formations are you going to see? Uh, they had a lot of condensed and bunch sets that we weren't uh, necessarily prepared for because we hadn't seen a ton of it on tape. So that stuff takes some adjustment. And you, and you know that going into that first game, especially when you don't have a completely new film from the 2021 season. So I was really uh, excited about how our defensive staff did adjust and our players were able to take that over as well. And you saw guys that maybe, maybe were a little bit nervous early, settled in and started making some plays as the game went on. So the first half touchdowns coming from uh, Irvin Mulligan, Ryan Ingram and Nathan Walker, 21-13. Terriers led it at the half. We come back. We will check out half number two. Oh, a whole lot of football yet to be played. That's coming up next on the Coach Josh Conklin Show presented by RJ Rockers. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show. The Terriers with an eight-point lead at halftime heading into the third quarter at Elon. What was your message to the team? I'm going to guess it had something to do with the second half was a little bit of a problem in the spring. Focusing, finishing, what were the themes you told the team at halftime? I, re I really go back to what we kind of said at the beginning. Is just Hey, just continue to take one play at a time. You know, that last two-minute drive, you could tell that there, again, some nerves set in. Uh, they were trying to get off the field. I, I, they started to focus on the results instead of just doing their job and really taking one play at a time. And again, that's a little bit cliche -ish, but it really, you got to come back to that. And so when we went out in the second half, we talked to our guys about, hey, just take it one quarter at a time, one play at a time, uh, and the results will, will take care of themselves. Well, what turned out to be a wild second half, the Terriers led, then they didn't, then they did. Well, you're about to see the rest. Peyton Derrick had success with a, a keeper on the option in the first half. He pulls it down, clutches, then throws it, and it's intercepted. Threw it over the head of Dylan Droz, and it's picked off by Rodgers. And Rodgers is going to try to go down the right sideline and vaults out of bounds inside the 20. That kick is up, and he booms it through for his third field goal of the day. That slices the Whopper lead down to 21 to 16 with 9.24 to play. Next to Elon quarterback Davis Cheek, who is back to throw. Surveying the field, has time. Now the pocket collapses. He's got to run, pulls the ball. Down, it's knocked out. Fumble. Wofford's got the football on Elon territory at the 25 yard line. And Springer the snap. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is no good. So the first miss from Walker Gliarmus. They get everything moving in the right direction. This time it's a throw out to the left flat and it's complete again. And once again, it's a first down. It's falling forward as Cortez Weeks. From the Wofford 37, man in motion. Cheek pump fakes twice, then lets it fly long down the middle of the end zone and wide open for the touchdown is Chandler Brayboy. And the Phoenix go back in top on top. Important right now. That yeah. defense has been on the field for a long time. Ingram, one of the running backs, a tight end of the backfield. Ingram will get it. Makes a step to his left, and he's across the 30, the 20. Ryan Ingram into the red zone. Inside the 10, knocked out at the 9-yard line. A 30-yard run. 
missed his last one. This is fairly short. 26 yarder from the left hash. Kicks up and it is good. So Walker Gliarmus gives Wofford the lead back. 10-15 to go. All right, we'll do it all over again. Fourth and two. Elon trying to get the first down and keep this drive alive with Wofford leading by two. It's a straight handoff to Witherspoon, and he will not get there. How about that Terrier D? Third and four from the 21 of Elon. Two backs on either side of quarterback Peyton Derrick. He takes the shotgun snap. Keeps it, option right. Keeps it, first down and more. Tate Peyton Derrick, oh, he fumbles into the end zone. Elon recovers in the end zone. Oh my word, they still have life. Another play here to try to make that an easier task. Cheek is back to pass, looking left. A flob up high, out of bounds. Out of bounds, Skyler Davis, the junior kicker. They will spot the ball between the 36 and the 37. Officially, it's going to be a 46-yard attempt for the win for Elon. Kick is up. It's not going to make it. It is short and off to the right, and Wofford's going to win this ball game. Wofford is going to win it. All right, deep sigh of relief after that field goal, which, was, by the way, was tipped by Miles Richardson. We didn't realize at the time. Went right, and the Terriers hold on for a 24-22 win to start the season off with a victory. I know the range of emotions was probably going crazy on the sidelines. As, as Elon was driving there at the end after the late turnover by Wofford, your defense had probably thought they were already had already won the game a series before. What was your gut feeling as Davis Cheek was trying to drive Elon for the game-winning field goal? Well, as soon as we the, – the, kind of the chain of events that happened there is, you know, we make a play on offense, and I think everybody, including myself, thinks, well, if we get a first down, it's over. And he gets the first down, and it's over. The game's over. We just have to take a knee, regardless of what happens now. We don't have to get in the end zone. Then he fumbles it. And then you're back on the field. It's at the 25-yard line. And I think the defensive guys initially were a little bit in shock that they're going to have to go back out there. Uh, but we challenged them. We said, hey, this is what you want. You want to be on the field to try to end this thing. Um, we wouldn't want it any other way. Let's you know, take this adversity and, and challenge ourselves to, to get off the field and, and get a win. And, and they did. Uh, it wasn't pretty the, the, first, uh, the first few plays of that drive, but it ended up going our way at the end. I know bend but don't break is kind of a defensive cliche that a lot of coaches don't really agree with. Um, there is something to bowing your neck when you have to. And I thought defensively that's what that's what your guys did. And we, we got contributions from some names that we don't call. Uh, Amir Anor, Harrison Morgan, um, John Boyles. Um, you could probably add six or seven names to that list. You're able to rotate a lot of your defensive linemen. Your, your, your stud senior linebackers, they are what they are, um, kind of encapsulate the whole defensive effort as a whole for us. Well, I think, you know, going into a game like that, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. So there were times when we would like to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, we spoke about that yesterday. But um, just from a pressure standpoint, and again, you're just trying to get a feel for it. So uh, we felt like if we could keep the points off the board, which we did, we played really good in the red zone. And I think what you said there is you had some guys show up, and, and they really made some big plays in some critical situations. Uh, that was really encouraging to see. So when you have that type of fight, that type of want to, uh, you know you have the guys that can make the plays. Um, we spoke about even this morning as a staff, you know, we're gonna, we'll change some things up because we feel like we found, hey, these guys do this really well. And that's just kind of the evolution uh, of the defense and, and the evolution of, of our offense and everything kind of moving forward uh, is finding out what those guys do well when the lights are on. Offensively, 397 total yards. Peyton Derrick showed flashes at times. Had to have been nervous. First collegiate start, the ball was sailing high a couple of times. Um, I know you have to clean up the turnovers, and nobody's beaten himself up more probably than, than, than Peyton after that game. But he did win the game. He did lead the offense. Room for improvement, sure. But how did you feel about his first effort? Well, I think he'd be the first guy to tell you that he's got a lot of things that he's got to get better at. But I, for a guy that's coming out and, and a completely – I say completely new system. It is a new system in terms of what we're trying to do with the with the pass game and the run game kind of in combination of with the RPO system. 
So there's a lot on him. Um, he, he's learned it, and I think he's further along than what we all thought he would be as a coaching staff right now. Um, all those guys are in that room. So I'm excited about his play. Um, he's got a long way to go to get to where we want to go as a football team as far as his improvement. Um, but we're on the right track and we're on the right path, and, and he'll continue to focus on getting better, and we'll, we will as a program uh, as well. And a final question about the offense. It was kind of a patchwork offensive line with Al Hogan and Quayshawn Greenlee not being able to start. Hopefully the bye week will do some good things in that area. We kind of forget it's the first Wofford game that hasn't had Wade Lang calling plays in 30 years. Really, Dane Romero's first time playing calling plays all by himself. And the first time that Dane and, and co-offensive coordinator Tyler Carlton have ever really called a game together. So with all that as a backdrop, um, the offense fared pretty well? Yeah, they really did. And I think the the nine explosive plays are, are is something that we'll take that was really encouraging to see. Uh, we have to get better in the red zone. We got to get we got to get more points um, when we're down there. Well, we very easily could have had you know mid 30s probably in that game. Those are the ones that the offensive coordinators and, and the and the offensive guys will always look at and, and want to get back. But no, it's uh, it was encouraging to see. Um, I thought they handled it really well against, in my opinion, is a really good opponent in the CAA. Um, they'll be very competitive in that league, and um, it was a good start for them. All right, coming up ahead. What's up next? No game next weekend? That doesn't mean there isn't work to be done for the Wofford Terriers. We'll also look around the rest of the Southern Conference, the FCS, on week one. And also, Coach's special segment is upcoming. Ooh, I know everybody's kind of wondering what that's going to be. All that next here on the Josh Conklin Show. Because of this, we built Ford Super Duty to be our most capable heavy-duty pickup. Because of this, we gave the all-new 2021 F-150 an available 12-inch touchscreen. Because of this, we built Ranger with a terrain management system. And because Ford trucks are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. Don't miss the chance to get a 2020 F-150 with up to 10531 in total savings at your Carolina Ford dealer. The underdog, the long shot, the nobody from nowhere, never going to happen in your dreams, kid. 100 to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. So what I'm proud of is you guys dug down deep. Because you guys dug down deep and you found a way to get it which we did not do. A year ago. That's why it's a new team. Yeah! One, two, family! And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show, presented by RJ Rockers. I'm Jim Noble, and week two is an interesting time for a bye week. The schedule hasn't laid out like this for the Terriers in quite some time. Given your preference would it be later in the year where you can kind of take a halfway break, or are there are there some pros and cons having a week two bye? Well, I think coming off the spring season, I think a week two bye is going to is going to be beneficial for us. Uh, we've got some guys that are banged up, um, even from the spring. They're still trying to recoup. We've had a couple guys during fall camp that had some ankle sprains that, like you said, at the old line position, that hopefully we will get back now. Um, and by Kennesaw and, and then going into VMI, we should be pretty full strength. So. Um, it can do it can do some good things. We'll, we'll spend this week really kind of focusing on part you know part of it will be Kennesaw State, and then part of it will also be working on some of the things that we need to get corrected uh, moving forward for some of the conference opponents that we're going to see as well. Speaking of Kennesaw State, it's kind of turned into a little unofficial rivalry in the past few years. Meeting them in the playoffs two years in a row, both really tight, hard fought games that, that they came out a, ahead and and ended Wofford's season. Uh, they had a tougher game than expected against NAIA Reinhardt uh, last week and might have suffered an injury at the quarterback position. I know you haven't really dove headlong into game week prep, but what are your initial thoughts about Kennesaw State? Well, you know uh, what they're going to be in terms of a program. You know, we're not a triple option program, but I think we're built very similar. We want to run the football, we want to own the line of scrimmage, we want to play a tough hard-nosed, blue-collar style of, of uh, football um, on both sides. And I think they do the same thing. So they're going to be a heck of a challenge. Uh, we're going to face two option teams this year with them in the Citadel. So that's always a challenge. We spent a lot of time on that this summer. Um, but we will get into it. And um, 
you, you know it's always going to be a hard-fought game um, just because I think it's two very similar similar styles. I know you're ultra-focused on what you're doing here at Wofford. Did you have a chance to look at some of the results around the Southern Conference and you know ETSU going up to Nashville and knocking off SEC uh, Vanderbilt? You had uh, Furman with a pretty good win at home against a, a good North Carolina A&T squad. Anything jump out at you in terms of uh, week one of uh, the Southern Conference being out on the field? You know, I think uh, just in general, um, I think what you're seeing, I think there were four or five teams in the FCS uh, that, that won against FBS teams. Montana goes out to Washington. It's a really good brand of football. And I, I think that's the one thing that I think people are hopefully beginning to understand. And, you know, I think as a football team, and as a football program, you understand there are no more gimme games. I mean, you just, you just don't go to a game and think, well, we, we can – show up and win this game by a touchdown or two and uh, we'll be okay you really have to be prepared the coaching is really good uh, everywhere the players are really good it seems like everybody's got a good quarterback and so those things provide uh, a lot of competitive football and you better bring it every single week and you better be prepared and um, it can go either way you know I think a lot of the games we're going to face this year are going to be like the Elon game because FCS football is is a good good caliber football yeah. I think six of the nine Southern Conference teams began the season with wins, so obviously things get a little tougher as we near conference play, but the Terriers don't have to worry about that next week with the buy upcoming. When we come back, we will wrap up the Coach Josh Conklin show with, all right, this is my unofficial name for the segment, Conklin's Corner. I know that's kind of boring. We might come up with a different one, but Coach is going to pick out one play from the Elon win and kind of tell us straight it out and kind of show you the play behind the play that's coming up next here on the Coach Josh Conklin show. Ingles, a proud sponsor of the Wofford Terriers. And welcome back. This is going to be a fun segment we're going to do all season long on the Josh Conklin Show. We're going to spotlight one play from the previous week's game, and Coach is going to take us deep, deep, deep into the tape and tell us exactly what was going on. And, and this week, well, it was the play that we originally thought had won the game at Elon, the Phoenix driving down by two. Your defense really, really stepped up in the last two or three minutes of the ball game. Yeah, no, they did. And, I, you know, I think uh, there was about two minutes left, uh, and it was a third down, and we got a huge stop on the third down. And then uh, there's a fourth down that comes up, and we think they're going to punt it, and they decide to go for it. Uh, one of the things that we try to do in those situations is we try to, you know, kind of see what they're going to do formationally. And I'm never afraid to use a timeout in those situations. So they came out, uh, they lined in a formation, we had a defense called. And so we called the timeout. And then you try to kind of get your tendencies from what they've ran, you know, that week or what they've ran in that game uh, based out of that formation and try to get your defense set up the best way you can. Well, they came out like a good coaching staff does, and they get into an unbalanced formation. Uh, and the unbalanced formation is actually a formation that we had worked uh, numerous times. Uh, early on in the week, we had a short yardage uh, situation because we knew short yardage was going to be a huge piece uh, of this game. Uh, we actually probably worked a very similar unbalanced set uh, during that time. And we ended up checking uh, our coverage, checking the defense. We made an unbelievable play at the line of scrimmage. Mike Mason um, came in as a five technique, um, destroyed the full, or destroyed the uh, the block, and, and ended up making the play. And, and the knockback was tremendous, and that was a huge play in the game. What are some of the other keys to making that work? Obviously, Mason's penetration probably gets the ball rolling, but talk about the responsibilities of the secondary, maybe taking away uh, certain looks, and, of course, the linebacker is coming up and making the play. 
You know, in that yeah, in that in that particular um, set, in that unbalanced set, we actually rotated the the coverage to uh, the unbalanced set, and that takes a lot of communication, takes a lot of work. Uh, we end up taking our outside linebacker and putting him on the line of scrimmage once we rotate the coverage. Um, and then from there, it's about the guys being able to get off the ball and, and, and understanding kind of what they're going to see uh, and have an idea. And again, when you cover those things in practice and then you see them come up in a game like it did uh, in a huge situation for us, uh, it always gives you a little bit more credibility as a coach. Those are fun plays to look at, especially after a big W like we had Saturday at Elon. Coach, we appreciate it. Congratulations on the first win. You've earned a whole week off. Not really. These guys never take a week off, trust me, but it's a nice way to hopefully get some some bodies rested and ready for because the home opener, September 18th, 6 p.m. Eastern time start as the Terriers host the Owls of Kennesaw State. Coach, best of luck, and we will do it all over again in a couple of weeks. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. We appreciate Josh Conklin as always. I'm Jim Noble saying we'll see you next time here on the Josh Conklin Show presented by RJ Rockers.